coming up on Man Enough. For men, if we have even one friend that you can share five things you're angry about this week, mm. share them with somebody. And then that's all you needed was to get it out. You process it, let it go. Yeah. All right, next thing I'm angry about. Yeah. Process that one, let it go. That one, okay, let's talk about that one. Right. I think even that is a good exercise for us to do. For sure. You know, I yeah. think women have more experience at sharing what's going on, yeah. which is just a normal part of your week. And then something that might be frustrating or angry because you just expressed it and had someone validate it or just listen. Now yeah. you can let it go. Yes. Being man enough, what does that mean? It's really manly to mess up, admit you're wrong, and then grow. I couldn't accept that I was evil. So maybe I'm broken, but those broken things could be corrected. Intimacy between a father and a son is me just wanting to like put my head in your lap. I love you, son. You haven't called me a benevolent sexist, but my experience is women are better. Even if it's a positive, it's still not equality. I don't blame men for that. I just blame the system. This is Man Enough. Hey, everybody. You are joining the Man Enough podcast. I'm Jamie Heath. I'm Liz Plank. And Justin Baldoni is not here. We're, we're getting very used to saying that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. He's obviously taking a little break right now. Yes. For some good reasons. Mm -hmm. If you want to know why, listen to a podcast yeah. or two. We explain it back there. There we go. But I thought we could talk about something. That just happened? Well, first, let's talk about this. We, we are a show that's called Man Enough. We talk about uh, trying to undefine the idea of masculinity or redefine it because there's all different um, interpretations of it and versions mm -hmm. of it. And um, and we're all boys and men, of course, women in all genders, but sp specifically on this show called Man Enough, we all have different ways of expressing ourselves and we're all learning. So I figured, well, let's talk about something right now that this man right now is learning. Okay. And maybe there's someone out there that uh, is going through a similar thing. I'm maybe, sure. Maybe you got. I'm so, sure. all right, let's, let's be real. 30 minutes ago, Liz, we had a guest um, that we've been trying to get for quite some time, who's a famous man. We got 15, 20 minutes into our time with him, and we were having these technical issues. We never got started. As a result, of course, he's busy and he's got things to do. So, um, fully understand that. But we lost out. Mm hmm on being with someone that's um, a powerful man that I've been looking forward to talking to. So here's my thought. I'm frustrated and I'm angry right now. And what I don't wanna do is respond and react in this anger and not being sober. Not alcoholic, not mm -hmm. in terms of emotionally alcohol, but emotionally sober. Emotionally sober. Because when you make decisions when you're not sober, um, you look back when you sober up, you're like, ah, it was too hard or I was too this or I wasn't reasonable. Uh -huh. And yet, I also don't want to dismiss the reality of what I'm feeling. I want to process it. So I thought we'd just talk about how we process and how we deal with being frustrated mm -hmm. and what's appropriate and mm -hmm. what's not. Mm -hmm. I have to acknowledge it, right? You have to say, like, someone has to say, like, we had some guests on recently where she had said um, what she asks people is, tell me more, those three things. Yeah. Someone's frustrated. She's like, just tell me more. Mm -hmm. Frustrated about this and this and this. Tell me more. And eventually you get it out. And right. then you can move past it uh, rather than sweeping it. Yeah. So tell me more. Tell you more. Why is it? Why? Why was that so difficult? Well, aside from the fact that we had him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, everyone is working so hard. I personally, as the president of Wayfair, screw up all the time. Not because I intend to. Not because I wasn't diligent. Just I just do because I'm human. Mm -hmm. And because things happen out in my control and out of my control. But this has happened before. But that's not really the point I want to talk about because things happen. It's more how do we deal yeah. with when you're frustrated like I am right now. Because mm -hmm. what I'm feeling, and in the meantime, also my daughter's got a, an infection that my wife is with her at pediatrician ER to deal with it because mm -hmm. it's been now four or five days of something that we got to mm -hmm. address. So there's a little worry in there. Mm -hmm. We're doing a couple of movies. We're in the middle of a strike. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of pressure going on. So yeah. I'm feeling it. Yeah. And I think that there's a lot of men. What we end up doing is we either think that we can tough through it. We bottle up, we don't talk about it, and it sits there, it simmers, and then something that's completely ridiculous, just like a kid leaves a toy in the middle of the room and you blow up. Right. Whatever your version of blow up is. Over something that's nothing, but it's because of all the other stuff. Yeah. So what do you think are healthy ways <laughs> to process anger, to process frustration? I do know this. Um, just before you share a thought mm -hmm. that I go to this quote that I 
try to live by mm-hmm. that a man by the name of Abdul Baha says, which is, I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna paraphrase, that when you are feeling overwhelmed, and when you are sad and depressed, and you cannot seem to get out of it, and you're stuck, to immediately go be of service to another. Mm-hmm. And you will find that your troubles will dissipate yeah. because you see that others are having troubles and now you're being of service. And this is one of the medicines. Some people will say, well, you got to treat yourself and, and, you know, uh, Mm -hmm. bathe yourself in some love and self-care. But to me, the self-care is how do I then take this frustration and then go around the office and see like, who needs some help? Mm -hmm. Are you having trouble with the computer over there? Mm -hmm. And you go be of service. And all of a sudden you find that now you're purposeful and really why we're here to begin with in, in the world. And all this other stuff seems to dissipate. Doesn't matter. And that's yeah. how I feel like I, I can yeah. do it myself. That's one way to get through it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. What are some other yeah. ways? Liz? It's so funny because I had a day of uh, a very frustrating travel in, in order to get to L.A. to get to the studio and be here with you and all of you. And, uh, you know, one of those, like, it was like a clown show. It was almost like a joke, right, of, of just I had, you know— two flights to get back to LA and travel has been really difficult, you know, just overall this summer, there's a lot of labor issues. A lot of people who aren't being paid fairly or are in very difficult working conditions in airline industries. There's a lot of corporate greed happening there. There's also, you know, climate catastrophes (laughs) and just the weather being very disruptive. Mm. So there's so much going on. And I was, yeah, I I was texting our, our producer, Kayla. And at one point I was just like, I want to cry. Like I, I, Mm. and I felt like a, you know, five or six year old kid that just wants to have a a, a meltdown. Right. And in many ways, like children, we view them as emotionally dysregulated, but children are extremely emotionally regulated when they're sad. Right. When they're angry, when they have, when they're hungry, right. uh, right? They They express express it. It's like, I'm, I'm, this is not good, but if I'm hungry and I don't realize I'm hungry or if I'm tired and I don't let myself be tired and I'm not, you know, even connecting with that, I'll go to anger, right? Mm-hmm. Because that's and and I'll find something to get angry about so that I can express that physical feeling that needs to be felt. And so I think and and the reason why I even told the story is that when I wanted to cry and I was, and again, I, I go to anger a lot. I know it's something that a lot of men deal with because men can feel two things, either angry or happy, and there's no other, right, emotion. No in between and, and a lot of men will say, I, I actually, you know, I can't name another uh, emotion that I felt, you know? Wow. And, and and Brene Brown talks about how most people can't name more than six emotions, but for men, it's disproportionately mm-hmm. worse. Wow. And so even labeling emotions, it's actually a really useful tool to do in the moment. Mm. To say like, wow, I am really angry right now. And just being able to like say that or even if you're with someone and say like, it seems like you're really angry right now, right? Mm -hmm. Like helping the person label it and just validating that feeling I think is so, 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 so helpful. Um, But in that moment, I was like, what would – I was walking through the airport like wanting to just freaking like (laughs) – <laughs> and I was sensing that I was getting angry at at, at other people, right, in, in the airport for being in my way or being loud. And, and I'm like, these I'll people are dealing with the same crap that I'm dealing with. And I thought, what would Jamie do? How would Jamie? Because I've seen you deal. Like, you are hosting a podcast while running an entire studio. Like, mm. that is not – I don't know another person that's doing that. There's um, people. It, sure, there are people. But, like – that's a you sure. you manage a lot and okay. you're able to take in a lot and sometimes i worry about the toll that it takes on you really truly and i hope that that's something that you can create space for in your life to and on we can talk course, about babe. it on the golf course on the go- all right sure that, hey, that's see, it that's my therapy right there what do you talk do you talk about things on the golf course i do okay I okay very, okay so it's not dear just a friend that we talk no, no it's not okay. just in the ball it's like okay. out nature so and you're not think about work and I talk love. through things. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, Amazing. That's yeah. incredible. I'm so happy you do that. I feel like you're always connected to other people. Mm. I feel like when I get angry or again, when some people get angry, what's happening is that you get tunnel vision, right? Like nothing else matters except this thing that's in your way, this thing that went wrong, this flight that's delayed. And while in actuality, right, there's so many things going on around you, right? There's an elderly person that needs help going to the bathroom. There's, I mean, a million things, right? People living in in poverty, people who are affected by climate change in far worse ways, right? And when you're able to stay connected and stay Mm. grounded Mm. and not be in that tunnel vision, I think that you can deal with things much more easily. And the thing that came through for me also is that I think you're a very spiritual person. I grew up in a very 
non-spiritual household where religion had done a lot of harm to people in my family. And mm -hmm. so they were very opposed to it. And so actually finding my connection to a, to a higher power has been very difficult for me, yeah. but really, really, really crucial to helping me realize like there's a reason why this flight is delayed. And I don't even know what the reason is, but there's a higher good and, mm. and it's for the higher good. And I'm not supposed to be in L.A. in five hours. I'm supposed to be there. I don't know when I'm supposed to be there. Right. It's like a burnt toast theory. Have you heard about this theory? For people who, again, for you, it's just God or, you know, Baha'i, right? But for people who aren't religious, the burnt toast theory is that, <laughs> like, there's a guy who makes his toast in, in the morning and then he makes a toast and it burns. And so he's like damn it, I have to make another toast. I'm going to be late. Makes another toast, eats his toast, leaves late, five minutes late. If he had been on the train that was leaving five minutes uh, before that, he wouldn't uh, have gone and, into an accident and he would have died. Yeah, so yeah. the burnt toast theory is that there's a reason, even the thing that's annoying that's happening to you, there's a reason that it's happening. It's, it's not happening to you, it's happening for you. Sure. And even this episode, right? The first thing like we said was, okay, this is a situation that feels like it could be a failure. But what, like every failure is actually an opportunity yeah. and, and even calling it an opportunity, like, okay, so I have an opportunity to be in an airport for 11 hours. Yeah. What am I going to do with this opportunity? Like, not only is your flight delayed or not only are you not able to interview the guests that you want to interview, but now you're mad about it. Yeah. And, and, and now so, you got a second problem. Yeah. So like, let's just stick to one. Let's minimize the amount of problems. Don't yeah. add more problems than you need to. Well, that's actually what I am learning. And I think a lot of us can learn from is I do think anger is a feeling that is okay to feel. Of course. Because especially when you're angry about injustices, when you see an injustice in the world and you feel anger about it, it might get you off the couch and do something about it. Mm -hmm. But how we express our anger is really important. Yes. What I have experienced, I have, my father deals with, I, I, actually I have not re ever seen my father angry other than maybe two or three times yeah. in my entire life. He's very, very, um, spiritually grounded and always tries to see the end in the beginning, right? What does that mean? To see the end in the beginning, the beginning of your journey to see your destination, okay. right? And oftentimes we're just, we're, we're only yeah. here and we're upset and we're bothered with what's going on here. But if you actually see the end in the beginning of your journey, you may not be as bothered with it. So for instance, we lost a guest today. You lose a job, but if you're able to see that by losing that job, you actually got a better job exactly. in six months from now, yeah. and you could see that end yes. now, you would be thankful to the person who fired you. Yeah. You'd be like, oh my gosh, yes. thank you, because this gave me the opportunity for here. So right. to be able to see the end in the beginning is really important. Uh, my father does that well. Mm -hmm. I hopefully inherited some of that from him, because I, I actually use the phrase a lot, so yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if I do it perfectly, but uh, I do think about that. So in this case, with anger, it's important to see the end in the beginning. So. Right now, this has happened. My wife did this. I did this. I lost a job here. My kid got into a car accident and didn't call the insurance company back, and now it's costing us more money. True story. Um, um, we're dealing with a movie that got shut down because of strikes, and we're trying to deal with the ramifications of that. But if you see the end of the beginning, what could this mean? What opportunities can we grow from? Then maybe I'll deal with it differently now. I won't scream at my kid. I won't cuss out my boss. I won't be not talk to my wife for two days or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. So that you can actually think soberly and make decisions that don't make it worse. Um, and we don't have a lot of practice yeah. at that. One, because I think men just either bottle it up, I'm tough to get through it, I don't have to express any weakness, or strength is being angry and showing my, my power and you know, mm -hmm. damn you, damn you, damn you, damn you, um, which is not helpful. Yeah, anger is a weird thing. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think it benefits us to hold on to it. I think we have to ex express and acknowledge I'm angry about something. And then now, how am I going to deal with that? And what do I do with it? And what's the best sober approach mm -hmm. versus just reacting or not reacting at all, but then reacting later? Sure. Um, and reacting worse, right? And reacting worse. Right. Because it's, it's going to, yeah, the, no emotion goes away. Yeah. It just gets stored and grows. And young boys don't get, to, oftentimes, I don't think, yeah. you know, as soon as they express any emotion, my son is seven years old. He's in this summer camp where he's in this dance thing. And he doesn't want to do one of the dances. I'm not sure exactly why. I think maybe it was too, uh, I'm not sure right. what the reason is. But he had a lot to express. And what I wanted to do was like, tell me more. Mm -hmm. What are you feeling? What are you feeling? He couldn't articulate it, but I could see that he was uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, I don't think a lot of kids get opportunities to express being uncomfortable. It's just like, get through it, get through it. You'll be fine. Right. Shut up. Don't, 
don't cry, don't mm-hmm. laugh like I saw in this Target. This poor couple was being terrible to their child oh. in front of me and my wife. I mean, terrible, like screaming in public and then hitting them. And then like, if you don't, if you don't shut up right now, I swear to God, I want to. And this kid's like three. Oh. And like cussing at it. And I was like, oh my gosh, what the yeah. hell? And then we walked away and then we watched it. And I was like, what? First of all, that's terrible. But what experience did this father have? Yeah. What was his life? How does he deal with his anger? What is he angry about? Mm-hmm. Why is he taking it out on someone? Or why does he not have the tools to deal with yeah. whatever is he, he's frustrated about in a way that's beneficial? Yeah. Yeah. Could he see the end in the beginning? Like, this is going to harm my child. Mm-hmm. Could he see that today? Mm-hmm. Show him a glimpse three months from now, three years from now? Would you do it something different now? Yeah. I grew up with a very loving, nurturing father who had a lot of anger, like a lot of anger. And Why? there was, what do you think? well, I have learned recently that, you know, there's a lot going on with my, my mother, as I've talked about, you know, and my dad was sort of shouldering the weight of the entire, you know, family, financially, emotionally, um, and and being, you know, in many respects, both parents at, at, at many uh, periods of time and taking care of another parent. And he never talked about it to anyone, anyone. And I learned this like a few weeks ago. <laughs> and of course, it was a different time. Maybe now there would be more resources available to him to, for, for him to do that. But it never occurred to him to discuss it with anyone. Mm. And so what I see when I look back is just a, what you're describing, just um, a man who is shouldering the weight of the world, shouldering a weight that is far too wide and too big for one person, and it like spitting out like a, you know, um, a kettle, right? It's fine. And it comes out mm. and, it, and it would be over stuff that we would do. I was so annoying. I, I, I was, you know, <laughs> like a kid and I, I had ADHD too. I was just like forgetting stuff all over the place or like he would trip over my things and just like blow up. Mm. And then recently we were having this conversation a few days when I, before I came into studio in L.A. to uh, be here with you. He was like, yeah, I've been reflecting on like my dad. My dad was like a really angry person. Like, you know, he would just kind of blow. Like he was really, really nice and like amazing. But then he would like really blow up. And I was like, hmm, yeah. Mm, there you go. Reminds you of, remind you of anyone? Like, <laughs> and I don't even think it like he's made that connection yet. But yeah, like it, that's how his dad was, yeah. you know, and we sort of talk about bottling up. We talk about it in sort of a, I don't know, it doesn't seem casual, but I feel like just don't bottle up your emotions. But like the consequences yeah. can be very severe, not just for, yeah. you know, men and, and, and their health, but, you know, the people around them, too. If you have, I think women do this um, more often than men, but for men, if we have even one friend. That you can share five things you're angry about this week. Mm. Like I have one of my best and closest friends, Andy. Um, Andy I can Grimmer, be like, who's yeah, co-hosted. I, he has indeed. Podcast, yeah. I can be like, dude, I'm really, really bothered about something. He'll listen. And then afterwards he'll be like, that's not worth it. Let, okay. that, let that one go. Wow. Let it go. You, pro- you, you process it. Let it go. Yeah. All right. Next thing I'm angry about. Yeah. Process that one, let it go. That one, okay, let's talk about that one. Right. So that the five things that you think you're carrying, you can express them, share them with somebody. And then that's all you needed was to get it out. So if you have some friends that you can express it, and then you have a trusted person that's like, dude, I love you, let that one go. Mm-hmm. You're holding on to something that's some, that you don't need to hold on to that. Yeah. I think even that is a good exercise for us to do. For sure. You know, I yeah. think women have more experience at sharing what's going on. Yeah. Um, which is just a normal part of your week. And then something that might be frustrating or angry because you just expressed it and had someone validate it or just listen. Now yeah. you can let it go. Yes. Actually let it go. I don't mean like sweep it on the rug. Like right. You can put it in the in the bin instead of the recycle. Yeah. Um, the trash bin versus yeah. the recycle bin. We're having a lot of conversations on a national ch- stage about a lot of different issues. And a lot of them, you know, what we're really talking about is male anger, you know, mm. and how is male anger being ch- channeled or understood or expressed? And how can we teach particularly boys uh, to be able to 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 express anger in in like a healthy way? Right. Because mm. it is healthy. Mm-hmm. And if it's if you're told you can't be angry or there's only, you know, this violent way of expressing it, 
then you're going to turn to the Andrew Tates and you're going to turn to a version of masculinity where that is not only justified, but celebrated, right? That this is what makes you a, right. a, a man having, you know, dominating and, and getting into fights and being physically or emotionally violent with people. Do you think that's as rampant now as it was five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago? The reason why I ask mm. is in my circle. Yeah. We have children's classes in our neighborhood where there's virtues classes and about what anger does and okay. what about joy does and things of this nature. So giving boys opportunities to learn how to deal with mm -hmm. anger. Um, how, how do you process it? Do you talk about it? You know, um, or is it, or is the model that you're given like to be angry and to be yeah, loud and to be mm -hmm. all of those things. And I have experienced that. I think boys, even though I know it's something that goes throughout humanity or throughout the world, the globe, but do you not think that because of Instagram, because of uh, um, social media in general, that boys are not learning new ways and there's new tools available to them yeah. just from what they observe to how to behave differently than just being like, damn it, and pick up a bat and hitting something? Oh, my God. I mean, it's, we're raising a totally different generation of, of boys, right, from the way that, that I think you were raised. I mean, that's super exciting. And we're raising an entire generation of kids that are raised differently, right? Like, like my sister teaches feelings. Like, she's a socio-emotional learning, like, teacher. She, she explains to, to, to kids, and they have classes where they talk about how do you process these feelings? How do you label them? How do you do conflict resolution, like, we never learned about conflict right. resolution as kids. So I, I agree with you. I think we're becoming a much more emotionally aware society right. because of the world that we live in. We have no choice, right? Uh, mental People are talking about mental health much more. Uh, more kids are, you know, uh, I think in therapy than mm -hmm. ever before, right? Like I'm just mindful of not wanting to label boys where they then, they've, then they feel defensive. Right. Like we're just using a broad brush mm -hmm. to paint boys and young men or men in general that we're not – dealing with our emotions, that we don't have healthy ways. Mm -hmm. Certainly it does show up in many ways that it's not healthy. But I would also challenge us to maybe reframe it so we're not labeling and automatically putting boys on the defense. That when they're 15 yeah. and 14, that they're like, what do you mean I don't have tools? Yeah, I, I don't kick and scream. I don't think the majority of kids I know boys are people that hit women, are people that bang windows, mm -hmm. that people that run into people on the street or whatever, whatever yes. their way of expressing it are throwing tantrums in one way or another. Mm -hmm. I think most boys are healthy. Yeah. Yeah. We can't create outcomes out of the expectations that we have. Right. right? Doesn't mean um, they can be more healthy. Yeah. Doesn't mean we don't learn more tools of this nature. But I also don't want to take away mm -hmm. the progress and the tools now that our, our young boys also yeah. are developing, yeah. you know. Um, and anger is treated differently for different boys, right? I mean, black boys uh, don't, don't have a sure. right to be angry. That's right. Um, cannot be. Cannot. Not only have a right, yeah, can afford to be. Right. As soon as I'm angry, then there's the angry black boy, angry black man. It just fulfills the stereotype that a lot of people think um, it puts you in a whole category. Mm -hmm. Justin can get angry about something and yeah. people are like, oh, that's a powerful man mm -hmm. that's showing strength. I do the same thing in my position. I'm like, whoa, okay, I got to be careful because yeah. there's a whole narrative that comes behind that. Not always, but oftentimes. Do you? How do you deal with that? <laughs> you make the adjustments that you have to make. I want to get from one side of the street to the next. Justin can walk across and not worry about cars hitting him as much. I got to walk across the street, and I know that there's more cars out there that are in my way. Mm -hmm. But I want to get across the street, so you make adjustments. You just figure it out. I can't control the cars right now. We're trying to change society so that maybe they're more mindful of me. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, I just got to get there. So you make adjustments. Mm -hmm. And those who don't then sit in anger and frustration. Um, so we got to do two things. We got to get across the street while also um, teaching people how to drive differently. Right. right. That's a lot. Yeah. Carrie, did you feel it as a young, you remember like the first time as a, as a young black boy growing up and being like, oh, I can't be angry. Like some, like that's not going to work. Oh, yeah. It, what what are is there an example a particular example? Uh, I mean, so many. Um, there's just so many. But I mean, I have a lot of white cousins. Um, when they threw fits or tantrums, I noticed when I did, there was a different response from the world and how they saw me. I got to witness how they were treated when they were angry or, or sad or crying versus when I did. So you learn to hide behind it, put on a smile not deal with your emotions. And then I had a mom that obviously must have intuitively known that because she would ask me to deal with my emotions. Yeah. I think women do the same thing. I mean, you have to be mindful. 
in the world. Like if you raise your voice, then you're like seen as emotionally incapable mm -hmm. of holding a position because man, mm -hmm. she's really um, unleashed. But a man does the same thing. It's like, oh, look at that power. Yeah. Look at that. Look how he controls a room. Yes. But I think it's different where my life is not in for for black men, particularly in America. Like it's it's you, you, your survival is 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 tied to masking anger. And yet, again, these cannot be reasons why we don't persevere. Anyways, we got we got. Listen, this is about what we the original thing was about, like boys and how they deal with anger and how they deal with things of that nature. And mm -hmm. black boys have to deal with that, but also white boys got to deal with it. And Latino boys and people of all cultures yeah. have anger and different reasons why they're frustrated and why they can be stuck. Mm -hmm. Where maybe they can learn some new tools. But I do think the tools are being disseminated throughout the world. Yeah. Yeah. Social media is a, an ugly thing in many ways, but also it's access that people yes. see someone else behave in a way that they wouldn't have seen in their own community. Yes, yeah. Share your anger. Sharing it right now, by the way, when we're done with this podcast. Yeah. Um, I don't feel as frustrated now. Oh, my Just God. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I was before I was, like, frustrated. I'm yeah. sure people saw, like, in my body language. I was like, well, oh, we didn't know if we were going to do an episode. But just talking about it mm -hmm. and releasing it, it's like yeah. there's nothing to do. Yeah. Let it go. And if you don't. I mean, you walk through it. Right. And if you don't express anger, it turns into something worse. Resentment. Which is resentment. Resentment, resentment. I've been thinking a lot about, I am guilty of like just carrying around so much resentment because they don't express what I feel. And that's on me, right? Like, and I have a lot of resentment. Even I've been thinking about it in terms of mm. this show and the work that I do and just uh, human rights and social justice work, whatever you want to call it, you know, where I'm like, am I just resentful? Like, do I have too much resentment against men? And do I need to process my anger and make different choices so that I'm not just acting from from a place of resentment because no. nothing good could come out of resentment. I think good things can come out of anger as you pointed out, right? It it can it's an activating yeah. energy, right? Mm -hmm. And but resentment is not not it's a deactivating, mm -hmm. you know, feeling and so you're mad about something that you're not acting on and then you get angrier about it because you're not acting on it, right? And it's I think it's like the resentment just yeah. I, ha I had resentment for my father that I didn't know I had. Yeah. I think I've talked about this one point, but just long story short was I have had been molested for a period of time in my life. Um, no fault of my father's. My father was wonderful and present. And, and yet I talked to him. I'm 53. This is at, this is three years ago, four years ago when I talked to him. I was like, where the fuck were you? How did you not know this was happening? I was angry. And I had resentment that I didn't realize I had that he was not there to protect me from it, even though it was happening um, in ways that he wouldn't necessarily have known. Um, and I've already talked about this and, and publicly said it, so I'm not exposing him because yeah, he didn't yeah. do anything wrong. But I had resentment for something, but just expressing it and finally like having the courage to say, I'm angry about this, this and this. Mm -hmm. And him just receiving it and then yeah. just saying, I'm so sorry. I love you. I, I, I'm ashamed that I was there to protect you. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the skills. I didn't know how to see something that I couldn't see. Yeah. Um, and that was it. Yeah. Um, so one of the ways we deal with resentment is to address the issue, maybe talk to the person that you have resentment, uh -huh. even express it like everyone can't hear it. But if I'm resentful with you about something and yeah. I'm like, hey, Liz, I'm going to share something with you. I hope this doesn't yeah. make you more angry. Yeah. I'm feeling a little resentment because of this and this and this. And I don't want to carry it. Mm -hmm. It's not your fault. It's not my fault. I don't know. Maybe it's the collective fault. Um, but I'm I'm feeling this. And you might be like, oh, my God. I don't know. Maybe we get into a fight about it. I don't sure, know. But at sure. least it's addressed. Yeah. I also think resentment is actually also a really useful emotion because it does point to what you want. Right. It points to, you know, we talk about that with envy and je and jealousy. I mean, we uh, experts and mental health practitioners and Brene Brown. Right. Like she's like, look at what you're jealous uh, mm. of. Right. Jealousy. I hate feeling jealous. We a lot of us do. You're like, no, 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 no. I don't want to feel jealous of someone that I love or I don't want to feel jealous of this. But resentment, I think, is, is similar to, to that, like, you know investigating resentment, I think, is a really oh, okay. good one, right? Like yeah. some, sometimes I feel resentful towards people um, and I'm taking on something that they never asked me to take on, right? I'm like resentful towards someone because they're um, upset about, you know, uh, a relationship that I'm having that, that, and I'm like, 
trying to manage their feelings about it. And then I realized like, oh, I'm resentful because I'm taking on something that, that's not even mine. Right. And so I think rid yourself of resentment by having conversations with people, but also having a conversation about yourself. Like, what am I actually right mm -hmm. angry about? What am I actually resentful? Is there something that I want that I'm not letting myself have? Um, I think is a, is a really mm. cool exercise. Again, I, I think opportunity. That's great. Opportunity. Yeah. I think we are born into this world. I think the circle of life is about growing and developing, acquiring attributes and qualities like patience and love and compassion, strength, honor, leadership in ways that serve an ever advancing civilization. Because we're, um, Humanity is going to be around for a long time. And the reason why I feel like I've had children and their purpose and mine as well and my parents and everyone before is to ever grow that civilization. So that means like being in the gym, I'm working out my body healthy so that I build strength and capacity so that I can be, um, have a good body. Mm -hmm. And I feel like spiritually and emotionally, that's our purpose when we go through all of these angry feelings and joy and love and resentment. It's all this, it's all there to develop our spiritual capacity so that we can be a version that then advances and then raises our children to be better than us and to be better mm -hmm. than us and to be better than us. So that hopefully in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, women are not facing the same struggles that they're happen facing now, hopefully less. But I mean, being realistic, that people of color are not facing the same things, that people in poverty are not, there's not extreme poverty and extreme wealth, mm -hmm. um, that we're not on the political divide of people who are only, th you know, that we're just more unified mm -hmm. as a people. So I think that all these things we talk about are purposeful, you know, um, they're not just there. I love what you had said earlier. It's not like things that are happening to us, but rally, rather for us. Mm -hmm. And if we can actually everything in our lives, look at it, that things are happening for us and that we embrace them and we grow, how much better would we be? Yeah. Instead of blaming, but embracing, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. not having resentment. Oh, I'm feeling something. How do I work through that? How do I get yeah. there? And take care of myself when yeah. I'm feeling that too. We were looking at this infographic it was like an iceberg, right? And anger is on the top and it's all of the things that are hiding that we don't see, you know, the, the part of the iceberg that's underwater is, you know, sadness, hunger, tiredness, uh, disappointment, fear, right? Is to be like, okay, I, I'm actually, maybe I'm not that angry about this, uh, you know, uh, uh, guest canceling. Maybe I'm just, I haven't really slept in three days because mm. I'm upset about, I, I need to go to bed early, you know? I don't need to like work harder to try and get another guest and try and make mm. up for this. Maybe I just need to like, Order pizza and go to bed early. Yeah. Um, and so. Order pizza sounds order great. Order pizza. Go to never, bed early. I'm never angry. Okay. I think this is it. We've come to it. It's the, the, the cure to anger. It's just pizza. When have you been eating a pizza and you were angry? Mm. I pizza feel like. And Ted Lasso. Pe pizza and Ted Lasso and, uh, equals. The Blackening. Watch The Blackening. Okay. It's a movie. Oh, great. Right. Is go. it Wayfair? No, it's no, not. Okay. Okay. Can we close out with a, a quote that I want to share that I try to live by and which is if Please. I say it, it'll help. Yes. I've said it before. Um, I'll mess up the end. Joy gives us wings. In times of joy, our strength is more vital, our understanding less clouded, our intellect keener. We seem better able to cope with the world and to find our sphere of usefulness. But when sadness visits us, all of these things elude our grasp. We even become as one dead. Joy gives us wings. So when we are in our joy, and ultimately find ourselves there, that's when we are at our best. That's when we are sober. Our intellect is keener, our understanding mm -hmm. less clouded. But sadness and anger and those things, it's not that we anything, don't need right. to process through those things, but that's not the best time to make decisions. It's so it's true. It's not when you're sober. Exactly. Joy makes us sober. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I try to live with that. And so even like dealing with some of the stuff we're dealing with today and yeah. all the other stuff in our lives, mm. how do you get to your place of joy? Yeah. So that you can uh, be sober. Wow. Yeah. Mm, love that. I'm going to keep that. I like you, me. Liz. Yeah. Oh. I like you. I like you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we haven't run into each other in the street lately, but we're going to. I feel it. I think I saw you in New York, by the way, in New Jersey on a bike. I swear it was you. I was yelling at you, but it wasn't. I, Were you in Jersey on a bike at all? Absolutely Damn it, not. I think it was you. I Biking to Jersey from I don't know, Brooklyn. Uh, you, bike in be, Jer you bike in New York with your helmet. I did. We did run into each other. All right. Let's get out of here. For those of you who... Um, 
want to come back and hear more <laughs> of Jamie and Liz and our next guests. Where can they find us, Liz? At manitup.com slash podcast. Oh, um, where can they watch us? Where, YouTube. YouTube. All right. We'll see you next time. Until then, uh, I'm Jamie Heath. And I'm Liz Plank. And this is Man Up. Up.